Hey guys, Miss Marisa here, and in this video, we're going to talk about calculating enthalpy using Hess's law. What we're going to be given is some sort of overall chemical reaction that we are going to try and determine the delta H value of that reaction. But what we're going to be given data-wise are some delta H values for some other reactions. And so what we're going to need to do with those other reactions is figure out how to rearrange them, manipulate them, and combine them together to get the reaction I'm looking for. And all of those changes that I made are going to need to be translated into changes in those delta H values. Once I get those changed correctly, then I can simply just add up those delta H values to get the delta H of the reaction that I'm actually looking for. So you notice it says here that Hess's law states that if an overall reaction is the sum of two or more other reactions that have been manipulated correctly to get reactants and products on the correct side um, in order to get coefficients correct, then the delta H of the reaction for the overall is simply the sum of the delta H of those other reactions. I would just add them up at the end once I made sure that the reactions could be just added up. So it gives us here some steps to calculate. First, we would want to decide how to rearrange our equations so that reactants and products are on the correct side. So what that means is that we may need to flip a reaction around um, and we would also want to make sure we get correct coefficients so we may need to multiply or divide one of those individual reactions and again whatever I do to those reactions I would then want to translate that change into our delta H values so if an equation had to be reversed we would want to flip the sign of the delta H um, if an equation had to be multiplied or divided then I would want to do that same mathematical change to the delta H value of that reaction itself. So then I just double check to make sure that all of my reactions combine to give me the overall one that I'm looking for at the end. And by the way, this step is kind of like what we did uh, with mechanisms back in kinetics. When we combine together individual steps to get an overall equation, sometimes we had to cancel things out from side to side. And so you're going to see us do that same kind of process here. Uh, once I've ensured that my overall reaction it matches up, then I simply just add the heat values together to get the delta H of the reaction that I'm looking for. So let's look at a couple of examples of how this works. So our first one here, it says that we discussed in a previous example in the last video you watched, that if the state of a substance changes, then the delta H of the reaction value is no longer correct. For example, here we have a liquid pentane that's undergoing a combustion. And when the combustion happens and liquid water is produced, the heat change would be a negative 3509 kilojoules per mole of the reaction. However, if that combustion takes place where water vapor is produced, now that heat change is no longer valid. And so what we're going to do is we're going to try and calculate what that heat value should be. You notice they've also given us here the heat change associated with going between a gas and a liquid for water. So that's going to be kind of the helpful piece here uh, to ensure that we can actually do this calculation. Um, so what we want to do is it says that we want to calculate the correct delta H of the reaction for this last equation that we see down here. So what I want to do first is I want to see where these substances match up in each of these equations. So I'm going to try and find in this final equation where each of these substances are located at in these individual steps. So the C5H12, the 8O2, and the 5CO2 are all in that first step. The 6H2O as a gas is located in this second step here. Now, I noticed that there's some issues with that, and we'll talk about that here in just a minute. So once I've kind of matched up my substances and kind of located where they're at, what I want to do is I want to see if I need to do any manipulations to these individual equations. Now for this first equation here, the things that match the C5H12, the 8O2, and the 5CO2, not only are they on the correct side of the equation, but they also have the correct coefficient. So that means this reaction is okay as is. I'm not going to have to do 
any kind of manipulation to it. Now what I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and rewrite it down here. So that way we can practice with canceling things out here in just a minute. Okay. So I'm just going to copy it down as is since we didn't do any kind of manipulations to it. And since we didn't do any manipulations to it, then that means that heat value is still going to be that negative 3509. So I'm just going to kind of write that off here to the side. Okay. So now I want to talk about the other equation. I know that the H2O gas is what matches up here. But here's the problem. In this equation here, I need it on the product side. And if I look at my step, right now it's on the reactant side. So that means I know that I'm going to have to flip this equation around. Not only that, but I notice it has the wrong coefficient right now. I'm going to need a coefficient of 6, and right now I only have a coefficient of 1. And so therefore, I'm going to have to multiply this equation by 6. So when I do that, what that would give me for this equation is now 6H2O as a liquid leading to 6H2O as a gas. And now I'm going to manipulate that delta H value. So instead of a negative 44, since I'm flipping it, I'm going to have a positive value. And then instead of just 44, I'm going to need to multiply it by 6. And so what I want to do next is I want to make sure that these reactions combine to give me the reaction that I'm looking for. And so I want to see if anything cancels out from side to side. Obviously, I had this liquid water in here that I don't want in this final equation. And so we should see that that cancels out. And in fact, I have 6H2O on the product side and 6H2O on the reactant side, both as a liquid. And so those would cancel out. And if I look at the things that remain here, I notice that these are the exact substances in the correct spot on the correct side of the equation for where I want them for my equation that I'm looking for. So everything checks out. So now what I want to do is actually combine together or sum together these two heat changes for those individual steps. So I would have my negative 3509 and then I'm going to add it to the positive 44 times 6. And I see that that gives us a heat change value of negative 3245. And that would be in terms of kilojoules. And you could go ahead and then put moles of the reaction since this is the value that's specific for that reaction that we were looking for. All right, let's go ahead and do one more example together. So if you wanna flip the page with me. All right here. So it says, using the following standard enthalpy of reaction data, calculate the delta H of the reaction for the combustion of ethane. And they give us three individual reactions here with some delta H values. However, what they don't give me here yet is my overall reaction. And so what we're going to do is we're going to actually first take the time to write that equation. Um, so for ethane, if you remember, methane, ethane, propane, butane goes in the order of one, two, three, four carbons um, and so ethane should have two carbons and I always double that and add two more to get my hydrogen count so that's gonna be H6 and when I have a combustion I should have plus O2 yields CO2 and H2O Next, I would want to balance with coefficients. And so I say, hey, I have C2. So that means I would want to have two carbons here. I have H6. So I would want to have six hydrogens here. And so I need to put a three. But now when I check those oxygens, I run into an issue. Um, I notice I have four plus three more. That's a grand total of seven. Um, and so that means I would need to put 3.5 here to get this to work. 
Well, I can't put a half number. And so to undo that, that means I would need to double everything. So instead of a 3.5 here, I'm gonna put a seven, and that means I'm gonna double everything else. So I would have two ethanes, four CO2s, and six H2Os in order to get this to balance out. All right, so next what I wanna do is I wanna see where these substances match up with the individual reactions that they've given me up above. Um, so I notice that the C2H6 is present in this first equation. The O2 is present actually in two of these, which we'll have to pay careful attention to him after a while. CO2 is in this equation here, and then H2O is in the last equation. So what I wanna do now is see how I need to manipulate these equations to get everything where I need them to be. I notice for this first one, where I have C2H6, that first off the C2H6 is on the wrong side. For my equation, I want it on the reactant side, but this equation has it on the product side. So I know I'm gonna have to flip that, but I also notice that it does not have the correct coefficient. So I'm also gonna need to multiply that by two. Now for the next equation, I'm gonna ignore the oxygen for just a moment. And the reason why is because it's in more than one equation. So I'm gonna focus for right now on the CO2. I see it's on the correct side, but it doesn't have the correct coefficient. I want a coefficient of four, and so I'm gonna to need to multiply that by four. Finally, for the water, I see it's on the correct side. However, again, not the correct coefficient. And so I'm gonna multiply this by six. Now I know some of you are thinking, Miss Marusik, you did not put states. Is that a problem? Well, here it's not going to be because what we're gonna assume is that this water is gonna be a liquid and that everything else was a gas because of what they are in those other equations. So since there are no state changes happening here, I'm not gonna have to worry about that, okay? So now here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna rewrite these individual equations and see if these changes will get everything to work out. So flipping this and multiplying it by two would give me two C2H6, and then I would have on the other side four carbons plus six H2s. Flipping this 84.68, would cause that sign to flip. So instead of a negative, it's now gonna be a positive 84.68. And I'm also gonna take that value and multiply it by two. All right, for the next equation here, um, I we said that we need to multiply it by four. So that's gonna give me four carbons plus four O2s yielding four CO2s. And I'm gonna to need to take that negative 394 and multiply it by four. For this guy right here, I said I needed to multiply it by six, so that's gonna give me six H2s. One half times six would give me three O2s, which would then give me six H2Os. So that would mean that I would need to take this heat value here of negative 286 and multiply it by six. So now I'm gonna see, do these all cancel out to give me the equation that I was looking for up here? And so I would say, hey, carbon stays the same from side to side. I also see hydrogen staying the same from side to side. So that leaves two C2H6 which is what I was looking for. That leaves seven O2s, which is what I was looking for. That leaves four CO2s, which is what I was looking for. And finally, six H2Os, which is what I was looking for. So what that means is that everything I was looking for is where it needs to be, that those reactions combine together to give me the reaction that I want. And so I can just simply add up these heat changes together. So that gives me a positive 
84.68 times 2. I'm going to add that to negative 394 times 4. And I'm going to add that to a negative 286 times 6. And I see that that gives me a total heat change of negative 3122.64. Now I will tell you this, with this one in sig figs, if you notice, uh, only this first number had two places past the decimal, the rest of these had none. So since eventually I'm adding these, I probably would not need to include those two places past the decimal. So I would probably just report a negative 3122, and that would be in terms of kilojoules per mole of the reaction as listed up above. All right, we got one more part to this question. It says that the heat of combustion for ethane is the heat associated with burning one mole of ethane. This, which we wrote right here, is the delta H of the full reaction. But I want a delta H of combustion for just one mole of ethane. So it says, based on the question above, what value should be reported for the delta H of combustion? Well, if this value was for burning two moles of ethane, if I want the value for just burning one mole of ethane, then I would just simply need to divide that in half. And so that would end up giving us a value of negative 1561 kilojoules for when I burn a mole of ethane. So you notice there I kind of changed that subscript from being the full reaction to now being per mole of ethane specifically. All right, here's what I want you to do. I want you to pause the video and take just a moment and see if you can solve what the delta H value would be for this reaction number four. It gives you three other reactions here that you're gonna need to manipulate and combine together to get this guy. And you're gonna have to do those same manipulations to those delta H's before you add them up. So go ahead, pause the video and try it out. All right, did you pause it? Did you try it out? I sure hope you did. I'm gonna go ahead and throw my answer up here. You can see how you compare. So when I matched everything up, I saw that this first reaction here had the C2H2 on the incorrect side. So I needed to flip the direction of it. And when I flipped it, that flipped my sign. For the next one, the carbon was on the correct side, but it needed to be doubled. And so I needed to double that value of the heat change as well. And so there's my doubled reaction and my doubled heat change. For this third reaction with the H2, the H2 was on the correct side and it had the correct coefficient. So it was okay as is. And so I just rewrote that equation at 285.8 with a negative with it. Now, let's see if things canceled out from side to side. I'm like, okay, well, I see here that I have five half O2s, so that's two and a half, and I have two and a half O2s over there, so that all works out. I also had H2O on the reactant side and H2O on the product side, so that went away. And I also see that I have two CO2s on the reactant and product side. So if I look what's left, two carbons, one H2, giving us C2H2. I see that matches up with the equation I was looking for. And so therefore I could just total those numbers together once I manipulated them. And so that gave you a delta H value of a positive 226.8 kilojoules per mole of the reaction. Now keep in mind that once I know that this has a positive value to it, I know all kinds of other things about this reaction now. I know that this reaction was endothermic. Um, I know that if I put my hand up to it, it'll feel cool to the touch. I know that it's transferring energy in 
from the surroundings into the system. I know that the potential energy of the products is going to be higher than the potential energy of the reactants. I could draw a potential energy diagram. I could calculate with it with stoichiometry. There's all kinds of things I could do with this value now that I have it. The trick is I had to find it first. All right, I hope we're feeling good about using Hess's Law to calculate heat changes of reactions. If you have any questions or need any help, please feel free to email me. Bye, guys.